Welcome back once again. Today is going to be a quick video and it's going to be like a first look and impressions of Zorin OS 16's beta. Now, I was, uh, the, the Zorin team were kind enough to give me, uh, I guess, early access to the beta. It's now publicly available. If you want to go and download it, you can. Uh, and I have waited a little while longer than the, the initial press cycle. So the public beta for this was available about a week ago. And so I've been playing with it on and off for the last week or so, because I really wanted to dig one little step deeper than just the initial sort of list of new features or the, the changes that have been made. And having said that, that's exactly the first thing that I'm gonna do just to get it out the way. And then I'll kind of share my impressions or thoughts on it uh, in this, since this last week of using it, we'll see where we land. Bear in mind, none of this is final review or anything like that. This is very much first impression. So now that we've got that straight, we'll jump in. Okay. So Zorin OS 16 is, uh, a iteration on the Zorin project. If you're not familiar, the Zorin project has been around for quite some time. And I do want to acknowledge my own personal bias for this project in that uh, I do love what the team have done with this project. Uh, I kind of always have been a fan of Zorin in some form or other. And, uh, and I've had a chat with uh, Artyom, one of the co-founders of the project uh, about what their ambitions are for Zorin OS. I already have a, a fair bit of, I guess, investment in that sense. I want to see this project do well. Before we do go any further, make sure that you're subscribed down uh, below and hit the notification bell so you know when new content on this channel is coming up. We're trying to chase down our 100K subscribers, so your support is always appreciated. On with the spuds. Here are some of the things that are new for Zorin OS 16. Now, first of all, what I will say is that while they say a stunning new look, I would say it is a iterative new look based on the look that they had going in Zorin OS 15. Not a bad thing because the, I think personally, the look that they had for Zorin 15 was very nice. And really the things that they've changed here are given us some lovely gradients on the side. Um, they have continued to use those animated widget sets. So as you can see, as I'm selecting these different folders, you can see them sort of pulse a little bit when you select them, which is really nice. Uh, and as per usual, they do continue with the color customizations and others that we'll get to in a second. Uh, that help make the UI a little bit more personal to you. Seems to be a trend that we're seeing across the Linux desktop and I enjoy it, it's good to see. At its heart, Zorin OS uses a very customized version of GNOME Shell. Now we've seen this done before, but I feel like the Zorin team can do it better than most, uh, at least when it comes to both feature set and overall UI polish and consistency. There's a lot of people that love the simplicity of the GNOME desktop, but they don't like the lack of options that it gives them. Uh, Zorin OS, I think, is moving more and more towards a middle ground, at least that is with GNOME 3.38. Because Zorin OS 16 is based off Ubuntu 20.04, it does rely on some of the older GNOME libraries instead of the, uh, the newer GNOME 40 and GTK 4 widget set. Now, if that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. It's uh, irrelevant for you. If it does mean something to you, fantastic. They are talking about having a faster and smoother performance. Uh, the jury's out for me on this one because at this stage, I'm only testing it inside a virtual machine and, uh, and the performance on those things is always going to be compromised in some meaningful way. Another big change is that, uh, which is something that I uh, commented about with Zorin OS 15, was that uh, it'd be great to see FlatHub included in the software manager by default. It is now, great to see. Some other things that I'm noticing about the software manager, it seems a little more sprightly than the one that comes on Ubuntu by default. I'm not quite sure whether this is because it is the stock GNOME software um, manager or whether they, the Zorin team have actually made some customizations to it. Because something else I'm noticing is that the star ratings don't come through on the, uh, on the software center and the comments sections don't come through. I don't know if I'm missing something there, if they've disabled those for, this, uh, for the purpose of performance, 
but you still do get the option to choose between uh, installing a package from the repositories, from the Snap Store, or from Flathub. That's all out of the box, which, like they say in their release notes, does in some ways give them the largest app library of installable software that you can use. And they also have the a, a quick way to install Wine libraries and all of the tools that go along with that uh, out of their repositories as well, which is great to see. They also have a really nice, I'm talking really nice tour app. This is a great trend to see across the Linux desktop in general, that more and more Linux desktops are choosing to install and have pop up on first boot a really polished uh, tour guide that can help you get familiar with the system. It's really nice to see. You can launch Zorin Appearance, which we'll talk about that in a second, customize the desktop the way you like it. Um, it prompts you to install drivers if there are those available. Connect your online accounts, use Zorin Connect, which is basically like a fork of KDE Connect that's built for the GTK based, GNOME based uh, shell that we're working with here. Uh, it helps control your phone from your desktop. It's very cool. Uh, software center and also they give you a prompt whether you want to install only office instead of just LibreOffice uh, because it has better compatibility with Word docs so great to see um, so all of that all of this stuff so far is the kind of spit and polish that average computer users care about now the Linux nerd in me at this stage is not all that impressed I'm like well this is iterative at best um, it's more or less the same as Zorin OS 15 uh, then the Linux nerd in me rejoiced a little bit to see this. Touchpad gestures built in to the desktop. If you've seen my guide from switching to Linux from Windows 10, uh, you'll know that I've recommended Zorin OS before as a great place to start. I don't think that changes, at least not yet. We'll have to see what the final release is like, but including one-to-one -one fluid multi-touch gestures on trackpads is a great place to start. Uh, so that's great. The question I have around this is whether or not we're going to get a chance to be able to customize some of these things. I don't know yet. Uh, so I haven't been able to find any particular settings uh, that target touchpad gestures at this point. But bear in mind, I'm also on a virtual machine, so it doesn't even see a touchpad. So maybe I'm missing something and I need to install it on native hardware. It's probably what I need to do. So take that with a grain of salt. They've got a new sound recording app. Interesting. Uh, and they have a much more customizable taskbar. Now, this is where I want to get back to Zorin appearance as well, because the key bit of feedback that I think Zorin OS has consistently gotten is that it is a customized version of GNOME Shell, like I mentioned at the top of the video. It does give you some flexibility with how you want that shell laid out. You can run a, a, a version of the shell that looks very similar to GNOME shell, that looks similar to Windows XP or, or a more touch friendly version of, uh, I guess, of Windows or GNOME. Uh, and then on the ultimate edition, which you can pay real money for, uh, that gives you more pre-configured layouts and a bunch more software, and it helps support the project financially. Uh, it will give you Mac OS and Ubuntu Unity and also uh, coming very soon Windows 10 X like interface with a smaller screen app launcher and centered taskbar icons. Now, I think what they've managed to do this time around, at least on first impression, is they've managed to pull together a lot of the customization features that uh, that people want over their desktop without sacrificing the coherence and the really nice user interface and user experience design. So we've got all the accent colors that we had before, which by the way, does affect the accent colors of the folders as well. Great touch, because not all Linux desktops do that. You can actually use a different theme if you want to. Uh, so it kind of takes a leaf from GNOME tweaks there. And the interface does give you the option to customize things like where the buttons are, enable jelly mode, which is a new feature of Zorin OS 16. Basically, it just gives you all the wobbly windows and the swooshy minimization uh, effects and all that fun stuff. So if you're into wobbly stuff, then you'll like that. And taskbar settings. Let's open this bad boy up. And boy, howdy, do we have some options to play around with here. 
The taskbar, because of the nature of how many different people love to tweak the workflow of how their taskbar works, not only on um, Linux, but also in the Windows world, it's great to see that they've been able to take a lot of the feature set that comes in the dash to panel uh, extension on the GNOME desktop, and they've been able to kind of make it their own a little bit. So the power to um, be able to put the taskbar where you want it with multi-monitor setups, being able to isolate workspaces, as in freeze them while you move the other workspaces on the other monitor around, uh, whether you want to um, be able to cycle through open applications by using your mouse wheel on the taskbar, or whether you want to uh, minimize on the click of an icon of a window that's already open, whether you want to change the position of any element on that taskbar, it's all very customizable now. And it's not hard to get to this level of customization either. You can right click on the panel or you can jump in here on Zorin Appearance and tweak all those things yourself. Uh, desktop, icons on the desktop, no problem, out of the box, which is kind of the way it should be for a lot of users. And you can customize your fonts. So all of that's fairly straightforward. My question is, I do wish in some ways that the Zorin appearance was a subset of desktop settings here in GNOME settings. Now I understand that that would uh, require some, maybe some more significant work in terms of trying to link in a, a plugin essentially into the GNOME settings app as opposed to just making your own. Uh, but it would help the desktop feel more coherent because there's nothing I hate more than having multiple settings uh, apps to manage different parts of the desktop. While we're here though, great backgrounds. They always are with Zorin. Uh, it's just one of those small things I really appreciate. Also the backgrounds that change uh, depending on what time of the day it is, that's also here specifically with this mountain. Who knows if there'll be more at the final stable release, but uh, yeah, this is what we are left with. Another thing that I'd like to mention about the way that the user interface works and the user experiences, uh, especially around keyboard interaction, is the use of the Zorin menu, which is this little guy here, with the GNOME activities menu, which is this guy here, or the search bar. Um, what I would love to see, and you can choose what you want the Windows key on your keyboard to do, but at the moment, the search in the Zorin menu is limited to applications. For example, if I search mail, it'll bring up evolution. If I search night, it will uh, not bring up anything. Whereas if I search in the GNOME activities view, night, it will bring up the screen display options uh, because it knows that night light is embedded in those GNOME settings. It'd be great if the same level of search was uh, applied to the Zorin menu as it is in the GNOME activities menu. Now my way around it at the moment is that I use the meta key to map to the Zorin menu and then I use meta space to trigger the GNOME search menu. So I can kind of use it like a keyboard launcher. Uh, I recommend you could do the same if you wanted, but it's a thought. Wouldn't it be amazing to combine the power of this GNOME search with this Zorin menu so that the Windows key is once again all powerful. So first impressions are highly polished. On a virtual machine, it's not as performant as a KDE based distribution. I don't know if that's fair to extrapolate that onto real metal. I will wait until the final stable release to give my final thoughts on the performance side of things. Final thing that I wanna leave you guys with is that uh, for those of you who might be thinking that in a lot of ways, Zorin OS is nothing more than a overly patched Ubuntu. I would like to direct your attention to the amount of software that is packaged up in the Zorin repositories. Things like more up-to-date graphics drivers, things like Lutris, Steam installers, more up-to-date versions of LibreOffice, more up-to-date versions of key GNOME libraries and software beyond what is found in the default Ubuntu repositories. There's a lot of extra stuff here that is three layers into the system compared to what a lot of other yet another Ubuntu release uh, does. So to bring it full circle, my first impressions are this. On the surface, it doesn't feel like a lot changes, but the further down you go, you realize just how much core infrastructure this OS 
builds in. There's a great amount of software that's brought in and kept up to date, maintained by the Zorin team. All of that takes a lot of hard work and dedication, which is why I love what this project is on about. It makes the changes that everyday users care about, the sort of polish that we don't always see uh, come bubbling to the surface until we've been living with the distro for a while. So that's my thoughts on the new beta. Be keen to see what the performance is like in the final stable release and whether or not we get any more uh, bells and whistles to play with, uh, I guess, as feature calling cards for the new press cycle when it finally goes stable. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.